Show cette semaine est consacré à Alexander McQueen. Derrière ses défilés spectaculaires, ses shows provoquants et sa mode extravagante se cache un homme timide, talentueux, sensible. Nous sommes venus découvrir cette face cachée d'Alexander ici dans la campagne anglaise, mais nous irons aussi à Londres dans son studio de création où il nous a subjugué les ciseaux à la main. So Alexander, here is your house. <laughs> and, and <laughs> thank you, dogs. Go on, go on. Come on. Mina, come on. Come on. Yeah. The view is very important here. Why? Because it's next to the sea, and uh, I have an infinity with the sea. I need to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm Pisces. Uh, I don't know. It's just that it's, it's very calming. You know, it's that it's it's all the elements. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, when it when it rains and it snows and you near the sea and, you, and you, you can hear the waves and you can see the in England we see white horses you yeah, know the big yeah. uh, you see the waves and it it's very uh, melancholic but it's a very romantic and uh, you know you can just stand here and you look out and sometimes you can see France and from your bed you can see France can, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's a very old house. Yeah, 400 years old. Really old. This tree has a strange story. It's very old too, huh? Yeah, this is older than the house. This is uh, over 400 years old. It's, a, it's an elm tree. And uh, we uplight it at night, and it's very Tim Burton, who's a good friend of mine, and it's like, it's good inspiration for you. Remember the conciergerie show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I designed the conciergerie show here. Ah, yes? Yeah, because this tree was the start of the show for, you know, the wolves. Yes. This was the start of it. McQueen, un génie de la mise en scène. Paris Mode, dès 1996, décide de le suivre et le met à l'antenne afin de le faire découvrir ici à Paris. Diplômé de la St. Martin School en 1993, il crée sa marque dans la foulée. N'ayant pu accéder aux studios de Jean-Paul Gauthier et de Martin Margiela, les deux seuls créateurs qui l'intéressaient. A l'époque, c'est la galère, les temps sont durs. Issu d'un milieu modeste, McQueen ne bénéficie d'aucune aide. Chez LVMH, on repère la perle sur Paris Première. Une aubaine pour cet enfant terrible. Terrible et prodige, McQueen a 26 ans lorsqu'il prend la suite de John Galliano chez Givenchy avec la haute couture du printemps été 97. Sa mission, la direction artistique du prêt-à-porter et de la haute couture. Un vrai challenge pour un jeune créateur. L'expérience Givenchy arrondit ses fins de mois et lui apprend à maîtriser ses idées. Mais il n'est pas à l'aise pour autant. Il choque, il provoque, cultive une esthétique sexuelle parfois cruelle. McQueen surfe sur l'ambivalence, il voit la beauté là où d'autres voient la laideur et le morbide. McQueen, c'est avant tout la coupe, impeccable, apprise à l'âge de 16 ans chez les tailleurs de Savile Row, féminisée grâce à son travail haute couture. Mais dès décembre 2000, c'est le clash à du LVMH. On va parler un petit peu de ton histoire dans la mode, comment un petit peu tu as commencé, ton passage dans la haute couture et puis ton arrivée dans le Gucci Group. Comment tu as évolué um, I'm much more relaxed as a person. The Givenchy days, as you know, was uh, quite traumatic. Um, it, it was a lot of work. I, w I was 26 at the time when I started Givenchy. It was a great experience. But maybe it was uh, for someone so young, I think it was a lot of work mm -hmm. to do because I was designing 14 collections a year. It was incredible. Uh, I would never go back. Uh, I mean, I would never step back. I, I, I'm glad I did. Yes, of course. It was one step yeah, in one, your way, yeah. And I'm glad it was when I was young and uh, because now it's made me more confident in my own work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think I understand more what I'm looking for in my life, uh, in my work, and uh, because even if sometimes I wouldn't like to think so, my work does run into my life. So there has to be some sort of peace and calm there. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've, I'm, I'm very fond of Domenico and Tom, and 
I'm very they let you very free? Completely, 100% artistic control over my company and over the illusion mm -hmm. of Alexander McQueen um, and the shops, uh, which is the main reason why I chose Gucci Group over LVMH because of the freedom. I think, uh, no disrespect to uh, um, Monsieur Arnaud, but um, the different mentality, uh, uh, a different concept in business. But my, my feeling was more of a family orientated company, more relaxed and less uh, pressurized. And uh, I'm happy with where I am now. C'est en décembre 2000 aussi que McQueen cède 51% des parts de sa société au Gucci Group. Un soulagement financier. McQueen, en toute confiance, ne doit plus s'inquiéter pour sa trésorerie. Il décide de défiler à Paris. You know, when we started making uh, investments in other companies, I really thought about every season whose collections do I look at and whose collections am I jealous of, in a sense, and whose collections do I think are absolutely amazing and Lee or Alexander as, as the world knows him um, every season you know he's he's something that is so rare one day Tom came to see me and said you know we really need to think about uh, Lee McQueen and uh, I never forget, he gave me a tape of a, what I thought was the most moving, beautiful shows that I've seen. I've seen a lot of shows. Uh, really, it was the show about the birds, called The Bird Cage. And I thought it was, it was beautiful, it was simply beautiful. It was very moving, it was beautiful, the clothes were beautiful. He's a, a real poet. And the wonderful thing about Lee is he is poet, and he won't like this either, but it's true, poet and commerce united because he's very practical he's very real he understands he wants to be successful and um, so he understands that you know you can express whatever you want on the runway but you have to have something beautiful on the hanger to sell to a store in fact that in the performance of the McQueen store that we have opened so far has been very very strong uh, somewhat stronger than even we expected and uh, despite the fact that, as you know, we've gone through the last two years, it's been a sort of difficult economy for, in general, for the luxury industry in particular. En avril 2004, Domenico Dessolé et Tom Ford vont quitter le Gucci Group. Espérons que leur successeur saura respecter le talent et la personnalité de McQueen. Alexander, tu vas nous parler un peu d'architecture, parce que cette maison, c'est euh, toi qui l'as voulu comme ça à l'intérieur. Et quand as-tu commencé à t'intéresser à l'architecture Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always been a passion of mine. I, I, I did really want to be an architect when I was at school. Mm -hmm. But where I come from, I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no qualifications to be an architect. Now that I can afford to work with architects and work in architecture, it's, all, it's like a hobby now. Quand tu as acheté cette maison, tout de suite, tu as su ce que tu voulais à l'intérieur Yeah, I mean, this... Because it's, 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 it's pretty much like my work is uh, contradictory in terms. It's like the house is 400 years old and uh, the inside I wanted uh, very modern, uh, but comfortable as well because I have, to, I have to live here at the weekends and uh, it's... Uh, It's, it's relaxed. It's, it's, it had to be a complete contrast. I didn't want to change the outside of the building because the outside has so much character. Uh, and with the surrounding areas and the countryside around here next to the sea. But it had to have my personality as well. So. Dans la boutique aussi, même s'il y a eu un architecte, uh, tu as tout voulu contrôler. I suppose I'm quite stubborn when it comes to my work and. Uh, Before, when I was uh, with uh, my old backers, uh, you let them take responsibility for uh, the illusion of Alexander McQueen. And I learned all early that it was the wrong thing to do because at the end of the day, it's my illusion. So when I signed with Gucci and we started opening these shops, I had a definitive idea of what the way the thing should look.
I think it's 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 very theatrical. I mean, if you if you see his shows, this enormous theatrical effort goes into the presentation of, of his clothing at, at the show. And I think what we were trying to do is to make a space that had the same sense of theatre and the same. You, you step off the street and you enter, you leave the reality of the world behind on us and you enter his, McQueen's world. And, how, and hopefully, I mean, there was a balance to be found between being too theatrical and overpowering the clothing and having something that was theatrical and very distinctive yet allowed the clothes to, to shine. That is your, um, because it's a best friend of you, but you are doing very interesting thing with him, Nick Knight. Working with Nick is always like exhilarating because he, he's always wanting to try to do new things. Um, I mean, the, the work I do for showfoodio.com, his, his website, I mean, it's, it's always revolutionary. Yeah. It's um, making a wedding dress out of a man's suit. And, uh, this is a real performance. Yeah, so it's performance art, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and it's live yeah. on the net. And uh, you can tap in, and you can see me uh, changing this man's suit into this wedding dress and covering him in paint. And it's exciting. It's it's, it's fresh and it's new. And, and Nick gives you carte blanche, so it's it's cool. On voit les vêtements. On voit la manière que qu'il se comporte, qu'il est en public. Mais personne ne voit actuellement créer des vêtements. Et on m'avait dit, j'avais entendu de Katie England et des gens autour de lui, qu'il faut vraiment voir Lee quand il coupe, quand il a un paire de ciseaux en main, quand il a quelque chose en main. C'était là, à ce moment, que lui devenait vraiment lui-même. Alors je lui avais demandé de justement créer cet vêtement devant le, nos, nos appareils, devant nos vidéos. Um, et il l'avait fait d'une manière assez... Uh, uh, il y avait 30, une trentaine de personnes dans le studio quand je travaillais, quand il travaillait et tout le monde était complètement la bouche ouverte euh, à le voir travailler. Quand il a vu qu'il a fait ça, il a dit « Ok, Nick, je te demande, il faut que toi, tu me transformes dans l'aigle doré. » Do you think that one day you will do uh, paintings or something else, sculpture or... Artistic thing, I'm sure. Maybe film. I've been thinking about making a film, maybe in the future. Like director? Yeah, I directed one uh, video for Bjork, uh, which was hectic. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, I mean, it was two 24-hour days. It was crazy. But I would like to make something a bit more, most probably more biographical. Something your like own story with your mm -hmm. family story? Yeah, uh, based on. You were lucky with your parents, with your family, mm -hmm. and they are always there and uh, very close to you. It's important for you. Yeah, because my family keep me grounded. You know, it's, uh, as you know, fashion is uh, can be a very superficial business, so. I have to have that cement grounding of my family. It's it, it, my family is what makes me the person I am today. You know, it's like when you know you're surrounded by film stars or pop stars and things like this. is It's good to come back down to yeah. earth. You know, at the end of the day, th there is normality in my life. <laughs> Retour à Londres, après nous avoir ouvert les portes de sa maison, Alexander McQueen, comme un gamin, prend du plaisir à nous faire découvrir ses archives. Are you excited to see again some pieces like this one? Yeah, yeah, really. I hope it's there now. <laughs> I haven't seen it for a long time. Yeah. I don't know if the rat is there, <laughs> but the, the castle is. Yeah, the rat is here. <laughs> yes! Ah! Il y a le rat dedans! 
Oh. He's still alive, no. No, my God. Oh. He's not alive. <laughs> it was a, a crazy piece. Yes, Because yes, it, yes. it was based on a, a mental asylum. And it's like the things you used to do, like play cards and build who, who made this one? We made it here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This one is uh, from um, the, the it's a jungle out there where the cars were set on fire, but not by accident. <laughs> it wasn't part of the show, but yeah. And that was under London Bridge. It's it's quite heart wrenching. Not heart. It's heartwarming yes. to see these pieces. I mean, I, I don't know how I did these shoulders. Yeah. Feel the pad. It's like. <laughs> oh yes. And then I think the oldest piece I have is this. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so old. It's it's like it's 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 from the Highland Way. It's uh, when I was working with no manufacturer, I had n no backing. I was just myself in a small room, uh, Isabella's house in the. Like in a house, like a derelict house, I was making collections with like fishing wire and crazy things. But it's like how many hours you spend uh, to do this? You remember? Two night days. and day. Yeah, yeah. All, all through the night, all through the day. Oh, oh yeah. It was made here too, no? Yeah. With your... Uh... With the corset wow. man's jacket. The, with all the, the stitching details of uh, the couture. We always uh, speak about Savile Row, but we can see your, uh, what you learn in Savile Row mm. in every pieces, no? Yeah, no, definitely. It is... Like, uh, like, ba like uh, one base, or I don't know, like... Uh, it's, it's, it's fundamentally is what the collections are based on, you know. Yeah. It's uh, the construction. Yeah. So, but there's so much here. I mean, there's like crazy, crazy, crazy things. It doesn't seem so long ago, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's just uh, it's unusual to see how fast and how quick things have developed yeah. for me from the island rape to now, now with Gucci, now with shops yeah. the, all over the world. I think it's... Uh, um, because you are very young. I, su I suppose I am, uh, but I think it's, uh, maybe it's a good testament uh, for people like myself that come from working class backgrounds that it can be done, yeah. that you can do what you really want to do in life, and it is, everything is possible. Sa société emploie 20 personnes à l'année, 40 pendant les mois de défilé. Les stagiaires et les petites mains viennent doubler les effectifs des ateliers. McQueen, perfectionniste, supervise tout. Ici, tu travailles vraiment avec des ateliers. Euh, on pourrait dire que c'est un vrai travail de couture pour tes collections. I've always, you know, to make me very sort of like interested in a show, I have to do lots of hand work. I have to see because when you manufacture garments like you do in Italy, you, you can't really see the process. And I need to see the process. I need to see the patterns develop. I need to see. I just need to be more hands-on with my work, you know? I, I need to have that feeling and that passion for why I, I do fashion. All the people here are students and it's like training them up and giving them that, that, that initial step into the world of fashion, especially when it comes to the show, because most of all, everyone who comes from colleges or universities that works here, they all come to Paris, so they see it from the start to the end. So it's, it's almost like... A, like a mini university for students. What I learned at McQueen is um, basically 
everything that I learned for fashion, I learned here. Like, I didn't really learn it at university. Everything I learned about how pieces are created, how things are designed, how the ideas come up and we're allowed to work on them, and how to show then is in the end. I just learned everything here. Because you're working so many hours, you just learn so much, and you have to take so much in, and you get just get used to working to deadlines all the time, and um, learning just to do your best all the time, even you know that everything has to be of a certain quality and standard. Ils ont beaucoup de chance euh, de pouvoir euh, travailler avec toi. Je ne sais pas si toi tu avais eu cette chance au début. When I started in London, there was nothing like this. Yeah. You know, it's uh, because they are, it, it, it's as close as we can get to haute couture in England. You know, we, we do all our embroideries for the show here. We do have a, a part of the collection that's purely uh, handmade. I'm, I'm also lucky to have them, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it, it's, it's very long hours. It's seven days a week. And this particular show has been really uh, laborious. It's, uh, it's taken like two months. Est-ce que tu continues toujours à chercher des nouvelles techniques, des, des nouvelles matières et des façons de faire les vêtements Fundamentally, to me, this is what fashion is about mm -hmm. because you have to move forward, you have to progress, you have to find new techniques of cutting, new ways of developing fabrics, new, uh, you know, even if it been starting with uh, maybe 100% cashmere wool suiting and destroying it and then remaking it, and then coming up with something fantastic. Uh, we like to make mistakes, because you get the best ideas from mistakes. And this is what we do. We make loads of mistakes here. For this one print, there's most probably about 20 roughs, you know? Tw tw I mean, the, the artwork that goes into it, I mean, you, you separate all these images and we do it on the computer, we take it from references. I mean, it, you, this, this, print, this print started from a picture of Billie Holiday uh, being arrested for drugs. <laughs> and it ended up like this. <laughs> so this is interesting. You know, you know why, Alexander? Because when we look the show, they cannot know, you know, how it's difficult to do it and how the, it's, uh, it's... But this is, I mean, this is why uh, design of fashion is so expensive because of the, what goes into the garments, you know. It's not just about pr printing something. This is like m meticulously, like, engineered around a body. It won't, it, you, you can't... The high street can't do this because they can't afford to do this. This is what we do, and this is why we do it, yeah. because it's, it's, it brings fashion to another level. Yes, yes. So we, we go through lots of techniques, uh, like the Devore jersey. Yes, uh, you see we burn it out. Oh, yeah. And we go through like hundreds and hundreds of uh, strike-offs, we call them before we can get to the one we use. These are rejects because of the colorway is not right and whatever, but you know, it's just constantly, this, this, this glows in the dark and it's just like laborious work. I would also like to talk about the accessories of Sean Lin. Sean's my oldest friend. Uh, before I started, uh, he was my friend and uh, he, he was. He, he had the same kind of background. He was in uh, like an apprentice, like mm -hmm. I was, uh, like I was in Savile Row. He was an apprentice mm -hmm. in uh, Hatton Garden, which makes all the jewelry, like the diamonds and that. And so we just like collaborating, and now we, we usually collaborate on every show. I mean, for the for the Amazon collection, we uh, we come up with this, we could, like from the research and from the prints. Alexander comes straight to me and he knows exactly what he wants and he will do a rough sketch and he'll say look that's what I want and because I've worked with him for so many years he trusts my, my craftsmanship to execute it to the standard that he wants. Um, 
but then sometimes I'll go and look at the collection and then we'll sit down and talk about it and then we'll both come up with ideas of different things to make. The um, nice thing about working with Alexander is he gave me a platform to express my creativity and create things that normally I wouldn't have the opportunity of creating because, you know, I wouldn't be commissioned to make things like this for an everyday client. And it's the platform that he gives me which allows me to do, make such beautiful, strong pieces. It's always about pushing to the extreme the human body, the uh, human nature. Uh, a lot of people got confused thinking it was more to do with misogyny. But it was never about misogyny. To me, it was art because uh, uh, the chalices, the, the the cages were based on uh, uh, Anne Belmer. Yeah. And uh, the contortion of the body, you know. And uh, as a designer, you're always working with cutting up the body into different proportions, different shapes. This is what a designer's job is: is to to transcend what fashion is and what it could be. I like you like that. working on the silhouettes. Uh, when I first started to wear with Gucci, <laughs> and uh, they finished some garments, and uh, I said, can I have some scissors? And they give me the scissors. <laughs> and they went, oh, what's it do? <laughs> uh, yeah. <And> cash <laughs> cashmere calico, it's all the same. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just put that in all the way around. No, okay. Depuis ses débuts, Alexander McQueen cultive goût du spectacle et sens de la théâtralité. Chaque saison, il nous raconte une histoire mise en scène avec la collection. Est-ce que tu as beaucoup changé Est-ce que tu as beaucoup évolué dans l'idée du show et de tes collections I suppose more mature. You know, it's uh, it, before, like years ago, it was, you know, you, mainly about the shock tactics of the show to uh, to grab the attention of the press, make some form of statement. Uh, today, it's, it's more theoretically thought out. You know, the, the collection and the time. You know, the, my mind is constantly working over time to come up with a concise and directional collection that is fundamentally sellable but is also uh, on a higher plane, on an artistic level for myself. It's uh, no longer about shock tactics, it's about more about purely the aesthetic of the collection. What makes Kenzie tenacious? The moon moves and fluids, including the inner juices of human beings, that which assimilates and feeds the body. Pour ce défilé, est-ce que c'est la suite des autres défilés ou est-ce que c'est complètement quelque chose de nouveau no, the, this, this show started from um, a film. It's called uh, They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Ah, oui. I wanted to work with a friend of mine who's a dancer called Michael Clark. And uh, I've always wanted to incorporate movement into the clothes, some form of... Uh, 
emotion through movement of dance. And uh, I'd, I'd watched his film by accident about, say, about eight months ago. And uh, it, was, uh, it was emotional. And he had all the feelings of the Queen show, the, you know, the, the, the sadness, the happiness, the desperation. And it, was, it, seemed, it seemed quite relevant to what was going on in the world today. On a, on a design level, it's, uh, the clothes are much more feminine than they've ever been. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's in a period where glamour was at its height, the 1930s, but brought forward to the present day. And uh, working with Michael Clarke, it just pushed that illusion on. It pushed that modernity on. It's the most complicated show I've ever done because uh, we have about 38 dancers and 35 models. And uh, it's... It's exhausting. Rehearsals, dress rehearsals, fittings, uh, choreography, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a hard one. Jour J à Paris. Dans les coulisses, on termine les dernières robes et l'on s'entraîne encore. En salle, le public afflue à l'un des défilés les plus courus des collections parisiennes. I mean, this guy Michael just told us all what to do, and we just did it. So it was so much fun. One of the most beautiful shows I've ever been in. I think it was just amazing. It really was. I think everybody in this show really uh, realized that they were doing something special, and that you had to not hold anything back. You know, so it was inc it was incredible. Being around the models is very interesting for me because they have a very different physicality from the very strict train that I come from. And it's kind of been the week. This whole week has been a bit like that film, like five days of dancing and running and running and dancing. And by now, I'm sure that everyone involved feels kind of like people at the end of the show. I come here a lot when I'm uh, about to design a collection. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to think about which way to go and uh, just to think about the business. And for mainly... I like a meditation? Yeah, yeah, completely. Because I, I used to meditate and yeah. I used to do yoga. And, uh, you know, you, you sit where I'm taking you now, there's a cliff that you can just look out to France and then you see the birds and they fly right close to you and you see the rabbits it's just like to me it's like peace and quiet it's like heaven yeah so, it's heaven it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's quite shocking that there's, there's this crazy thing about Alexander McQueen party animal and this and now you see me like yeah, yeah. Snow White yeah this is why I think this is why the I find so much inspiration in uh, nature because how, how can you compete with this? Man can't make this. This no. is this is made by nature. Yeah. And Paris, it's important just to see to show your fashion now. You know what? It's, uh, I'm surprised because uh, I like Paris more than I ever did. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Paris much more than I did when I was at Givenchy uh, because I, I was just going from. Uh, my apartment to Givenchy and back again. I didn't really know Paris or understand the people properly. And now it's like every time I go there for the show, I have more. I, I, I make sure that I go a few days before so I can go to some exhibitions. I respect it much more than I did before. I thought I would say that because I had such bad memories of yeah. Paris. What do you expect for uh, 
the next years? Well, I believe in destiny, and if, it, if my destiny still lies in fashion in the next five years, then that's good. If it means my destiny takes me somewhere else, maybe film or, I don't know, art. But you are open. I'm open, you know. It's, uh, like here. <laughs> like my life is an open yeah. book. Uh, yeah. uh, in England we say, um, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm at peace with myself now, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice place to be because uh, I'm under no pressure except my own pressure, but I'm always pushing myself, so it's good. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you. interest me but so when it come forward to do a perfume I really believed it had to be a completely honest perfume perfume you know it had to be uh, something that come from my heart the play on uh, structure is with high-tech and traditional so you have this rich uh, red ruby Venetian glass with this uh, metallic surround so it's, it, it, it kind of balances out with my own collections, playing with tradition and playing with modernity and balancing it out so it becomes the perfect equilibrium. I think it does that personally.